congratulations for a run. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so how, how does it feel that uh, run is going to be uh, streaming on, uh, on Hulu pretty soon? We're, we're excited. You know, like it's, you know, it's not like everything this year. It's you're, you're finding the good out of a, out of a very weird situation. You know, this movie was supposed to come out in theaters and, um, distributed by Lionsgate on Mother's Day all around the world. And then COVID happened, which no one controlled. And now everyone's sort of making the best out of every situation. And I think if you were to really look at the, uh, the reality of where our world is and where the theatrical world is and the number of massive tent poles that are now waiting in the wings right to open, right when movie theaters open up, it just makes sense for our movie to not wait till that moment, you know, and, and come out now when, when uh, you know, people will actually watch the film. Um, it's obviously not what we intended, but uh, as far as where we went, we couldn't be happier that it's a, at a place like Hulu, which, you know, doesn't even have a ton of movies so that when, or original movies so that when they put their weight behind something, it actually means something as, as opposed to just being one element of a factory machine. So we're, we're excited. It's, it's, the, it's, it's lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's, 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 let's go with the easy question first. Where did the original story came from, from for Run? Because I found it very thrilling and fascinating. I mean, it was, it was captivating from start to finish. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think, I think, you know, so much of the, the, the story started with the um, sort of parameters of what we wanted to do. You know, personally speaking, you know, the, me and Natalie and Seb, who's the co-writer um, uh, and producer, he just came off a movie called Searching, which is the first film that I ever directed. And basically after Searching, Search, which was a very, very technically complex, kind of an unconventional, crazy movie, I wanted to prove to myself that I couldn't be in a box. I wouldn't need to be in a box for my whole life and that I could just immediately, to free myself, I needed to do the exact opposite. So I wanted to make a movie that was like very bare bones, very classic, very timeless, and very simple. Simple story, one camera, two characters, one house, like without any sort of fluff, still tell a story, hopefully, that was compelling and engaging and, and thrilling and emotional. But um, as far as what the story was, I think, you know, sort of an element of it was just sort of ripped from the headlines. And we thought when we saw one of these headlines without giving too much away, we just thought to ourselves, well, if one major element of that was just kept a secret from one character by another character, all of a sudden we have the elements for a very Hitchcockian movie and sort of we started moving forward on that because it felt like it hit all of these like check marks that we were trying to hit with the movie and um on top of it with like w as far as casting goes doing the right thing that we felt like wanted we wanted to make sure that we were kind of putting our foot down on so um yeah so those are all different elements that we kind of wanted it to do with it and it just felt like the right idea at the right time what were some of the things that you learned from the first film of searching that you wanted to bring on board for sure onto a film project like Run. Hmm. Anish, maybe you can kick it off. Yeah. So I think I think one of the one of the things that like again, so much of it was a response to go the other direction, if that makes sense. I think one of the things that uh, just purely up from the screenwriting standpoint, you know, I I, we, I pay attention a lot to what people say about our, our 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 work or my work or whatever, and I think like every review that's ever been written about searching, I've read it, um, you know, and I think like one of the one of the critiques about that film is is the way the movie sort of like has to explain itself, you know, uh, like at the end, even when it sort of even when the reveal happens to have like this massive explanation where it's just like you're explaining how all these things happened and. And I think like uh, we had a lot of critique from that. And basically I, when we were writing the next one, we were like, okay, the next film, when we write it, is gonna be, have a conclusion that just ends, no explanation. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna go from there. So there's tiny things like that from a narrative standpoint, from how I work with the actors, from how you prep and stuff like that, that I carried over. But for the most part, like this was my first live action movie in a way. Searching was an animated movie in some, in, in, in some ways. So uh, a lot of it was learning for the first time, but I'm sure Natalie has a bunch of other things separate from that. Cool. Yeah, I think for, for, for us as a, as a team, I think the thing that we had to learn was you know, searching was made, um, you know, independently. We weren't, it wasn't a Sony from, film from the get-go. We sold it to them at Sundance. And so we kind of made the first, we made searching like in this bubble where it was, it was really just like us and, 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 you know, Will and Nick are editors and just a core group of people making a movie. And on run, it started as a studio film. It's a Lionsgate film. And, you know, I think that was a learning curve for us in, in that there's a whole other kind of entity that's part of 
the creative process, part of the business process, part of the making of it. And so we, we kind of had to make room as a team for these other people to, to come in. So that was definitely a, a transition for sure. Did you feel to be under greater pressure since it was a studio film compared to an indie project? Or did you basically take it in small strides? I mean, I think there's more pressure in the sense that I think anything we did after searching was going to feel like pressure because that movie was made with no expectations and we kind of, we, we you know, we blew even our own expectations, I think, out the water. Um, so yeah, de definitely. And, and there's a studio with millions of dollars on the line. So absolutely, you feel the pressure. But I think at the end of the day, once you, once you get to the office and you start working on it, you have to block that out and just, you know, focus on making a good movie. I'm actually very fascinated with the actress choice that you chose with Kira Allen because I've, she's a newcomer. I never heard of her before, but after watching this film, I was very impressed. Talk about the choice of bringing such a young actress into a very difficult role like this. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy to take some, I mean, it sounds ridiculous to take an absolute newcomer and then put her up against Sarah Paulson and just be like, all right, let's see how it turns out. So, you know, it, um, but from our end, you know, the, 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 the reason we ended up going with Kira for the most part was like, because it was very important to us that we actually cast it authentically and casted somebody with an actual disability and who uses a wheelchair in real life. And so to like make that our sort of manifesto, obviously now that you're closing yourself off to all of the like proven talent in Hollywood who can fit that bill and play that role. Um, uh, and now trying to open up to a whole new set of people who might not have an agent, might not know anything about the film industry, might not know that they can act. And so like it involved a massive amount of like, um, coordination and, and work and outreach to film pro for to disability programs, art programs, after school programs, Facebook fit posts, all these things to like get the word out about this thing. And then all of a sudden we get a video from a girl who's recording in her Columbia University dorm room doing the lines for the movie and that's Kira Allen and and you know it was such a good take and we just asked her to give her we gave her some notes and she sent us over another tape and all of a sudden we were flying her over to LA and um, Sarah liked her a lot and we just started shooting and it felt like we were just watching she had no idea but we were all very conscious of the fact that like this is a star making role, you know, like you're the lead character of a, of a film. And if you pull this off, like you're going to be a star and we're, we're very excited to watch that one, watch her sort of like, you know, really, really blow up because we're, we're we, we knew it was going to happen, but it's still nice to watch. What was the extra efforts that she had to put in um, to basically portray the other type of symptoms? That's a good question. Um, she like perfected and researched the cough. Yeah. Like she, she, I think she reached out to, or me, and Nish, maybe it was your friend um, Art who, who consulted on the film as a medical consultant, but like she did so much, she's so well prepared. She did so much homework and she really like, I don't even know how she does it, but she trained her throat and vocal cords to be able to do this like really throaty intense cough. Um, and just, you know, like she physically, um, aside from the illnesses, but she, she like trained for this movie like an actor would for like a Marvel movie. She totally physically was training her upper body for all the, you know, crawling and all the, you know, activities she does. And it was really cool to see her like not only be a, a first time actor preparing just, just to act, but like preparing for this action role, you know, for, for a type, type of person that we don't normally get to see in that kind of role. It was really cool to see. Now the house itself was its own character because technically it was, it was a prison. Could, could you talk more about that that house and how you guys prep for the for for this film? Sure. Yeah, we found this we found this house in Winnipeg, which is where we shot the movie. Um, and it immediately, when you saw the outside of it, we just knew it was the house. So, you know, we were scouting house after house after house after house. And when we saw that, I was like, "Yep, that's the one." That you could put that on a poster. You could have one of those old like Saul Bass posters and have a, a like a poster designer draw it out and put Sarah Paulson's face on top of it, and it would look like intimidating and scary and we just knew that that had it just felt like somewhere that had a lot of secrets and stuff so from there immediately we just looked at it it just felt like a character kind of like what you were alluding to um in the film uh and it added to this sort of like timelessness of the movie which we were constantly going for you know like the movie minus a few scenes like a cup one 30 second scene on a computer is intentionally supposed to feel like it could be in the 80s or the 90s or the 2000s like it has this sort of like 
time outside of time feel to it, you know, and the costumes and everything. So um, that had just had it had it was just super super evocative of like a of, a, of an era of Larry Hitchcockian that we wanted to like draw into, and, and, and I'm glad we found that place. I think it was. I think that was an excellent move. And you mentioned Sarah Paulson multiple times. Obviously, um, you know, I've of all the stuff I've been watching of Sarah's work lately, you know, like Nurse Ratched or you know, um, glass and all this kind of stuff. Somehow she frightens me, but, <laughs> but what, 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 what was it about her that, um, that makes her perfect to play mother? I, I mean, I think she's just, I, like, I, 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 we could have written a doorbell and she would have done, like, she would have been the best doorbell, you know, we, uh, uh, ever. Um, I, she's, an, she, I, she's one of our, top, I think, one of our best working actors period you know like and i it doesn't matter that it was diane or the mom it could have been any role i think she's just fantastic in it so like but being able to like give her that role not give her that role being able to watch her play that role um was it was a privilege for all of us you know it wasn't like it, it that is a very complex role and it's, a, and it's also in a, in a much tougher role to not make it feel just like pulp easiness you know like it, it's it's like such an easy role to turn into a cartoon and 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 sarah made it a human being and i think like that is really tough uh really tough to pull off that that is an actual human being at the end of the day and not just a character so again very very lucky that someone of that caliber was even vaguely interested in joining this movie yeah, and I'll just add to that. I think what Sarah does so well, like in, in all of her work, is, is just like bringing multiple layers to performances. There's always like her characters are always hiding something. It's not always like what appears on the surface. And I think in this movie, especially like sometimes with, with just one look, she's conveying that she loves Chloe, that there's something darker underneath the surface and a couple other, you know, notes of her backstory. And, and she just does that so well. So she, she was a, a no brainer for us. Excellent. Well, let me leave with one one last thought because speaking of prisons, we are we we are are inside our own prisons at our own home right now. So, <laughs> how are you two staying creative and sane during times like this? It's a good question. I mean, we we haven't really stopped. I'd love to say that like the pandemic has forced us into like six months of of like meditation, but. You know, we've been working on Searching 2, which is an active, like, pre-production, and Seven and Nisha writing the next movie that we're all going to make, and um, we've been working on a TV show. So, honestly, we've been using the time as a way to, to kind of force ourselves to, to push our projects forward. So, working, working, working. <laughs> that is excellent. Well, hey, to the both of you, congratulations um, to Run. I, I highly recommend it to, to anyone who... Uh, and I, and I wish I saw it in the theaters. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very kind of you to say. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. Much. Bye now. Nice to talk to you.